All right, dudes, let's just keep rolling this out. So in the buy, hold, resell today, we're going to be, the big one anyway, we're going to be fo focusing on the best 13 available for this week and obviously for round 17 as well. And uh, for this round 16 team, I've got some shout outs that you could have for 14, 15, 16, 17. And really, then we're comparing the two between round 16 and 17 and, and the guys you might want to have for, for both those weeks together, like a, a bunch of these players at least half of them feature in both weeks given they've got you know, the buy in 13 and then they're out in 9, 10 as well or they're a Dolphins player that plays both and, and these types of things there. So yeah, again, a few, a few people in the comments, I, I will get back to you know, answering those questions in the Q&A section a bit later. But what we're, we're noticing there is that people are asking about you know guys like Dylan Brown, guys like SJ, these guys that are having... Oh, Brown just continues to score well. But anyway, that's a, a fun one in itself. But... SJ coming off a little bit of a rough game, obviously for him there. I do think he's a very, very clear hold. And this this little document I've put together actually shows that. So kicking off with the hooking position, Reed Marnie is just ahead of Damien Cook, about a point difference at the moment on average. And either one of them is going to be a good purchase. But Cook has a buy next week and maybe Reed Marnie suits you better. But Cook buy next week, Reed Marnie buy in 19. But over the next two weeks, Reed Money is the best hooker available. Now that he's got through his round 15 buy, they're the two guys you want to be looking at. Reed Money and Cook, in my opinion. And then obviously there's some cheaper versions under that in Appy and all those types of guys. But if you haven't checked out the Fast Fire by Hold Risk Sell, that actually goes through all the players and I give you my little thoughts on each of them. And then this one's focusing on the top tier best averages heading into this week. So yeah, it might yeah, if I don't cover anyone in this video, they're in the other video, I promise. Uh, for the most part. There might be one or two I miss, but that's where we're at. So for the mids, we look at AFB as the clear top best scorer at the moment in that in that mid position for this week and obviously next week as well. He's really, really important. So if you want the best mid available, he's it. If you want to go a little bit cheaper, then Stefano Utuokamanu is the, the next guy on the list. He's in there as the, the third best player going down the list from hooker down from there at a 52 and a half average. Then the third guy on the list, you've got Tarpane. Harris is actually the next best based on average. So Tarpane, Harris, Plath, Colin Matungi, and also Nat Butcher all sitting around that 50 to 52 mark there and will fit in perfectly. Either one of those guys, if you have a couple of them, that'll work out as well because they're from Utukamanu is a 52 and a half and uh, yeah, coming off a big score. Adam Fennell Blake just tick over 57. So yeah, that's the big difference maker there. And then we'll go through captaincy as well in this video. So right now, I wouldn't look at captaining any of the, the few that we've mentioned here, apart from AFB. He's coming up against the Titans this week. And last time he played against them, he scored a double. So that's probably the only little thought there. All the other guys like Stefano, Tarpany, they have big scores in him, but they'd be a little bit more risky. Reed Marnie seems pretty solid in the 50s. So he's like the, the safe captaincy option. We move to the edge position. And you've got Eli Katoa and Dave Fafita. So Fafita, the clear best option there. And then Katoa, the clear second best option. There's no one that's uh, a shout out here apart from Ewan Aiken, but he's in the center spot. So just note that he could go in edge as well if you wanted to there for Ewan Aiken. But uh, yeah, Fafita, a really terrific captaincy option. Eli Katoa this week as well. I think a really, really good option in that first game if you want to as well. Him, Hughes on a very similar level there. And to go on to that next stage there, it's Hughes with the best average of 57. Then you've got SJ at 52 and a half, actually, as well. And then uh, Burton just below that. So he's the, the second shout out and he features in the best 17 this week. Burton, but yeah, you're looking at SJ as people looking to sell him and he's the second best option this week and also next week, which is pretty funny. So yeah, Jerome Hughes, the clear best and then SJ and Burton following that. For the centers, you've got Aiken, who I said can go in centers on ed or edge. He's the clear best option average wise right now in the mid 56s, 56 and a half or something like that there. And then Joey Manu and Farnworth both have a very similar average right now. And Manu has the dual position, doesn't play 19. Farnworth plays 16, 19, misses uh, and 17 and misses uh, 18 there. So yeah, really cool for those guys. If you want to go for the like slightly point of difference play, then Farnworth will work out best there for sure. On to wing fullback, you've got Tedesco is the clear best option this week for sure. So try and get him in if you want. Chan Sigal start. he comes in at tick under a 50 average there, 49.8, and he's the second best option. He's actually the second best option for round 17 as well. So 
he's the sneaky one that if uh, anyone was interested in him, that could that could really work out. And the Warriors are playing better, even though last week was a, a very strange week after how well they started and then how they ended up. But he's the second best wing fullback. And then it's Jaden Campbell or Trey Fuller at the moment. So you're looking at that, two non-keepers are your third best wing fullback this week. Whereas in all of the other positions, it is 50 plus players. So Campbell and Fuller, I'd probably have like a 45 mark each. I was pretty happy to buy Campbell, th- hoping that he would average about 45, which would be eight points of value, seven now. And Fuller, you'd expect somewhere around that 40 odd as well. And I hope he goes nuts against the Storm tomorrow night. But yeah, it's just an interesting position there, the wing fullbacks. And that's where Chance could be a really solid one. Or if you've got guys that are backing up from Origin in Latrell, Dylan Edwards, all these types of guys, they could be solid as well um, and would fit into round 17's list. But yeah, just keep an eye on that. If you've got Origin guys, they could obviously back up and do pretty well, but most of them won't perform to their absolute potential following Origin. Some will still you know, play good minutes. You saw Payne Haas and Carrigan still do good things post-Origin. Same with Isaiah Yo. so there you go. And then, yeah, obviously the, the shout-outs are all guys we've mentioned. Cook is the next best of the hookers. One of the mids you'd pick, and then you'd pick a Burton and a Farnworth there if you were looking at um, yeah other options there for sure. So that's the round 16 best options there. Most of them were very, very clear. So you'd have guys that get up to about a 50, 51, 52 average, and then the next best in the position would be like a 46 or a 43 or 47, something like that. So yeah, count them up in your team. How many of those guys you have this week? So this is my team right now, pre-trades at the moment. I've got Jeremy Marshall King, who's unfortunately a tick under those two best options that I said. I've got Maxi Plath. He fits in there. King's just a little bit under that. And then I've got Samuel Lafino. So yeah, can't obviously have all of the best options there, but they're going to be solid enough this week for sure. I've got Fafita and Bloor, so I don't have Katoa, but I do have Fafita in there. Next up, I've got Hughes, who's the best half option this week, which is great. And then you've got KO Weeks. You've got Wishart, who could potentially uh, be in that list as well, but they're cheaper guys that aren't crushing it. Weeks, you know, if you're going off averages from the last month or so, then he would fit in there. Obviously, even with that 33, he's been great. For the centers, I've got Aiken, sort of the best option there. And then Karaz is a tick under. He's the next best option after Farnworth and obviously Manu there. So that's cool. Um, yeah, not ha- not unhappy with that in the centers, but obviously a tougher matchup for him this week against the Roosters. And then the wing fullback, I have Wishart, Campbell, and Fuller. So I've got two of those you know, three to four best options there with Campbell and Fuller. And then Wishart's been yeah, obviously scoring pretty well in recent history as well. And I'm just going to loop him. And I've got uh, Galvin to, to loop as well, depending on how things go in that wing fullback slot as to um, if we'll be taking you know, Wishart score in that game one. And if we don't, scratch that. Oh, sorry, if we don't, I can change, change Galvin with Weeks and Weeks can be my wing fullback. That's my loop for the week. Um, yeah, so I'm one extra. I have 14 players. But yeah, Galvin's in a solid spot as well, obviously averaging a little bit under 50. But yeah, not the clear top option overall. So if you're looking at that, I'm obviously missing a few of the important players like Eli Katoa. I'm missing Tedesco. I'm missing potentially Amanu, but I've got you know, Karaz that can can do a solid job. A chance to go could be good, but yeah, I have like some solid options in Wishy and and those types of guys. I'm missing one of the best hookers, but I'm not too far off. One of the best halves in an SJ or Burton. One, probably one mid, like an AFB would be nice, or an Estefano could work well, but I've got, yeah, Plathy, King, these types of options. So, yeah, look, you can't get it perfect each and every week. So keep uh, keep an eye on that yourself. I've got, out of that sort of best 17, I have, what have I got? Three, including Campbell Fuller, Plath. I've got Aiken, four, Hughes, five, Fafita, six. Yeah, so I got six out of the, like, seven, 13, basically. So slash 17 so not too bad at all heading into this week so round 17 want to add into that as well so read money features in both and obviously as i said the origin guys can back up and they could feature in here like isaiah yo or something like that but these are guys you'd be looking to purchase this week they're going to benefit you next week as well and that's read money uh, with cook being out next week he doesn't fit onto this list for the mids afb you've got mckinnis has the buy this week so he would come back into you know, calculations. And then it, outside of the origin guys, it's Tarpany, Harris, and Plath, who are all really, really solid for next week as well. And Harris looks like he will actually start this week. And that's why he's in there. He's obviously averaging 52 as well. So he was well higher on this list until the last few weeks. For the edge, you know, you know, 
basically you've got four of those five of those guys in the hookers and mids that are great for this week and awesome for next week as well. So look to get them in. For the edge, it is Katoa and Fafita. Nothing changes. F- Sorry, scratch that. Fafita doesn't go into this list. I'll have to, we'll have to do a quick check on that. Why don't we do that while we're here? Let's check the edge position. It would definitely be Aiken. He would fit in well for sure. But if we're not going to go for Aiken, then who is on next on the list? So Crichton's origin, Hopgood injured. He could be back into it. Dylan Lucas would have to feature for sure. Yeah, it'd have to be Dylan Lucas at a 51 if he ends up starting again. Uh, and then Nat Butcher. So they'd both feature in that edge spot there. So let's just go for for Lucas in the edge in round 17. I forgot the... Yeah, didn't put that right. The Fafita was out. For the half position, you've got Hughes and Hines. So Nico Hines back next week. It's going to be really cool. Obviously not backing up from Origin, but all the other guys are. Moses, Cleary if he comes back. Maybe we can slot him in, but we don't know that for now. For the centers, as I said, Aiken stays and it's Manu Farnworth and Dan Gagai, who's 18th man for the Maroons this week. So, and they have a buy anyway. So that's that. And then wing fullback, Drinky comes back into it, trading out of Campbell and also Fuller, who both won't play with Tedesco and CNK. And then same situation here is Farnworth or Gagai, Burton, one of the mids, one origin backup, I think would slot into that. Likely is the best 17, like the, as I said, the Yo's, Hasses. Carrigan's these gut type of guys that if they can come in and do well. Edwards, another one that I had on this list with Drinky, but yeah, as an origin backup as well, was something to note there. So that's sort of the biggest thing I wanted to cover in this video so far. And then you you, you got to look at your team and, and see obviously where you're at. Like a lot of people will be looking at their trade situation this week and, and worrying about that because, you know, we're sitting there, I'm sitting there with 14 Trades there for 12 rounds. It's pretty gross. So that's where I'm looking at this and go, well, I don't have the best possible 13 or you know, I'm not close to it. Only sitting there with close to, you know, what, five or six, as I said, of the best players. But having 13 this week on the park, you will make ranks. It's going to happen for sure. It's just how well and how good your captain goes for sure. Like if I miss out on Teddy and he goes 80, 90, 100, I might not make as many ranks as I would hope. If he goes 50, I'll be fine. If I've got, you know, Blaw that comes out and actually finally gets a try for one. So Jeremy Marshall King comes out and does really well. Karaz plays pretty well. Or Fuller for really would be like a big one for me. If he came out and get a 60, 70, that'd be awesome. But obviously thinking about next week as well, it's going to be the big thing on your list coming into this week there for sure. So around 17, look at your numbers for that and uh, and see where you're at. So for me, it's for feeder out next week. It's Campbell, it's Garrick. So looking at that, that is a center slash fullback. That is a fullback there as well. So Wishart, let's say he comes back into the wing fullback slot. That would mean I cover wing fullback. Would be fine. Karaz and Aiken are still sweet to cover next week. So that's great. I'm not in a, I'm not in a um, any strife having Garrick and Campbell for next week. And that's why you do the planning. So last week before I made that trade, I was doing that planning. And obviously knowing Garrick had the buy anyway, that I would be fine heading into round 17 unless there's other injuries that come this week, right? So yeah, wish he would come back down. I have Galvin as backup for the halves, which is great. Obviously adds to that 17, hopefully Cotter backs up. But if he wasn't to back up, I still have Finu, King and Plath. For the edge position, I would have Bloor and then I would have Piakura that would come into to that slot there. If Cotter was to back up, I could move Finu down into the edges if I happen to have an injury or something like that. So yeah, that's all good news to to think about and obviously the Cowboys are still trying to get wins but Pika is going to be there as a 17th player anyway we have Grant hopefully backing up he'd sort of fit into that 17th and 18th man bracket and then the question mark lies around what we do with Braley going forward from that so all these things you need to think about in your side like Aro is going to stick in the side there Pika I'm likely going to have for round 19 Bloor does he go in round 19 you know that's a little bit further down the track but Definitely all things you, you need to be thinking about and looking at your your round 19 as well, along with next week and how many you've got out there. Round 19, I'm sitting at 12 in terms of numbers, which is pretty good. And I can't, believe which, I can't remember which position it was at this point that I actually need, but yeah, definitely something you need to look at yourself. Obviously this week into next week, the trade situation as well. Please, if you're sitting at, I think six like myself, don't be making any sideways trades like, the Browns, the SJs, trading Garrick out, I think is a mistake. This week, if you're sitting at six under, six and under, if you're seven and above, 
I do think you have a little bit more leeway to make a trade or two that you know helps you for like a couple of buy rounds. So you know, Garrick, I still don't think is a good trade at like seven or eight, but nine or ten, you could probably muck around with that given he is going to be out for the next two. And if you need a center or wing fullback for the next two weeks, then I can understand the trade. You probably, if you had low on trades like four, five, six, like holding Cole, those types of guys could, you know, Talangi could be really good because you get them, well, hopefully Cole, like you get another price rise out of him or get another another good score. Talangi, you get him in round 19 so that and next week, so that'll be helpful. All those types of decisions I think you need to make based on your trades remaining uh, as well. And we'll go through this a little bit in a little bit more detail with Scoop later this evening and we'll get that video out tomorrow morning as well. But um, yeah, I think they're all the things you must be thinking about. The dual position stuff is going to be really helpful. How many of these mid range guys are you going to carry? Like is your team value high enough to, to be able to, I suppose, hold on to guys that are going to be dropping a little bit in price that can get you a score or two. Like, that's something you need to think about as well. Is your team value not great? And you know, looking at your team now that you're unlikely to get 17 good players on the park on a week-to-week basis post the buys in round 20 or 21, like I'm sitting there and let's count up all the guys that are 600K plus. We'll say that they're pretty close to keepers and that's Marshall King, Max King, Plath, Fafida. That's four. You got Hughes, five weeks is just short of that. Karaz, six, eight and seven. Drinkwater, Eight, Fuller nine, we'll count him because I've got a few guys close to 600. Uh, so Fuller nine. Then I've got Galvin 10, Garrick 11, Cotter 12, Grant 13. So 13 at the moment and I have a lot, everyone else is 410K and above. So I've got 543 or 513, 557, the 410, 518, 561, 597 and 559. So really... You'd imagine there by the near the end of the season with that very limited trades that we have left, one or two of those guys would be able to get two cheap guys under 300 or 350K and you'd be able to use that cash to get to 600, 650, 700K plus guys. We've obviously got Nico Hines as someone that I need to think about personally as someone to potentially get in my side in the upcoming weeks. So that's where Braley can come into you know calculations there for sure. Fuller. Next week too, if he isn't to be making this side, I do think that a downgrade upgrade option between Braley and Fuller could be really, really helpful. But again, that is still 1,168,000 plus my 22, so 119, so 1,190,000 to go into where we said of Nico Hines. So let's go back to the halves. Nico Hines is at 932. So that would leave 260, 260, oh, that's if Fuller doesn't go down in value this week, 250, 260 to drop down to a cheapie to then get up to Nico Hines. And like obviously Ruben Porter, the only Finu this week are the potential cheapies, but yeah, we might not have one next week and that could be hurtful for sure. Even Harry Grant's almost the same price as Trey Fuller. That's pretty wild. That is pretty wild. And this, you know, K weeks is almost the same price as Grant. Yeah, crazy times. But that's definitely something that I have to note in my plans for sure as to trying to get someone like a Hines with Fafita out next week as well. Like who's going to be the captain in round 17? Yeah, too many things to think about, isn't there? That's for sure. But then again, do I need another half heading into next week? You know, with Wishart, Galvin, Hughes, Weeks, all in that spot that can play that half position is that a position i need to target is it something that i want to target maybe in round 19 rather rather now with hughes and week or round 18 rather than round 17 let heinz's price drop one more time get him hopefully under 900 and then target him in those following weeks because you know that's something we all need to look at as well he's obviously owned by still a decent amount of people but nothing crazy right so he moves into Bulldogs in round 17, and then he's got Titans and Tigers 18 and 19. So clearly for me, I think in my side, it probably works out better that I wait, cop the 60 or 70, whatever it's going to be against the Dogs. Hopefully it's a little bit less, close to what he got on the weekend. And then Titans and Tigers, I need to target him for round 18. So with my situation being that Hughes and Weeks are going to be out and Wishart, 
I have Galvin playing and I'll need another half. So that is when Hines is going to be my big target play. So I think I need to wait until he gets a little bit cheaper, then potentially do some muck around, mucking around with some uh, uh, you know, portion of my players, whether that is Wishart a week early, something like that, or, or Braley obviously in Fuller. A few different uh, thoughts are going to be going through my head, that's for sure. Or I have to use Ruben Cotter's price or something like that to get to that really good score of Hines. But then again, by round 18, Cotter should be getting a good score like he did last week as well. Sean Bloor could be an option in round 18, given Fita will return in that week. And I'll have, uh, yeah, Pete Kuroff. I knew these types of guys I'll have outside of Plath being out. I'll have four mids then so Finder could play edge if there was any problems Aiken can play edge as well with Garrick returning yep with Wishart playing fullback Garrick could go into center so yeah a lot of different things to think about and I hope that little spitballing of information around my team helps you with your thoughts over the next few weeks just want to get in and touch on that as well I hadn't had as much strategy chat this week it was a bit more around getting the best players on the park and going through that buy hold risk sell so Thanks so much for being a part of this video this week, the strategy, the best 13s, and yeah, what you're doing this week, next week, and potentially going into round 18, 19 for sure. So thanks for being here, guys, and we'll catch you in that next video for sure.